This is an inclined plane example. Um, we are given that a block of mass m sits on an, a plane which has been inclined to the horizontal at an angle of theta. We're also given that the, uh, the coefficients of static and kinetic friction between the block and the plane are mu static and mu k, or mu static and mu kinetic, respectively. And we're asked to answer the following questions. So, I, first let me say that it's not a big deal that you're given mu static and mu k. Uh, it does exist for any two objects. The, the coefficient of friction between those two objects it exists. We're just not going to use them at the same time, so don't let that confuse you. If the block is moving, we'll use mu k. If the block is hitting still, we'll use mu static. So, that's what we use will depend on how the question asks, or what the question asks. So, first thing I need to do here is a good old Newton's second law uh, analysis, which begins, as always, with a free body diagram. Okay, so anytime I'm summing up forces on an object to draw my free body diagram, if you're in one of my classes, you will understand this. We have a two finger rule. The first finger is gravity, right there. Let me draw that a little better. How about that? Still not better. Ah, that's close enough. Mg. Straight down, even though my arrow is not very, very, uh, very straight down. Uh, that's my first finger, and my second finger is whatever's touching it. So what's touching this block is the plane. So this is going to uh, give rise to a normal force, which will look like that. So here's my normal force. I've got gravity on here. And as we've talked about in my class, if you haven't been in my classes, uh, this is the short version of that. The general strategy for solving inclined plane problems is to rotate our coordinate axes so that the y-axis is perpendicular to the, to the planar surface, which will look like this. And then your x-axis uh, will go uh, parallel to the surface of the, of the inclined plane. I like to define my positive directions like this. Uh, and I do that because if I let the block go, it's going to move down the plane, right? It's going to move this way. And so I generally like to call that the positive x direction, which is what I've indicated over here. Uh, you don't have to do that. If you don't like having your positive direction to the left in x, that's fine. You can do it the other way. Uh, I just like this better. But as long as you're consistent, you're free to do with that what you will. Okay, so my, as always, my strategy for solving... Uh, force problems, or any vector problems, is to resolve my vectors, in this case my forces, into components that line up with my coordinate axes. That makes the math a lot easier. It lets me analyze the motion in, uh, in one dimension, or in both dimensions independently, right? So my normal force lines up with my, my y-axis really well. But gravity does not. It's in between my x and y uh, axes, and so I need to resolve that into some components. So I'll do that now. This will be mgy. And that's not myy, that should be an mgy. If you can see that, let me just erase that and do it better. g sub y. And let me move to a different color. Blue will be m g sub x All right so my blue vector my m g sub x is the component of gravity that's acting down the plane it's what's going to cause this thing to move if indeed it does move and at some point in this problem it will at first it's sitting still but it is still the component of gravity acting down the plane now i'm not done right because i'm told uh, in parts uh well, in all the parts that I'm going to have some friction. In some parts, it's, it's uh, kinetic friction. In some parts, it's static friction. But either way, I need a friction vector, a friction force representation on this diagram. Which way is it going to act? Well, you can imagine if the block is moving, it will be moving... Let me change colors once again. It will be moving like this, which means my friction will be acting opposite to that. If... It's not moving, we'd say that the impending motion, the motion it really wants to have, is also down the plane, so f the static friction will be acting opposite to that. So let me get uh, one final color, we'll go with green. That's going to be my force of friction, and whether or not that's static or kinetic is going to depend on which part of the problem that I'm solving. 
So that's my free body diagram. Uh, if you're in my class, I'm okay with you leaving it like this. Just remember that even though we have this red gravity on here, that's not going to come into our calculations. What we, we're going to use are its components, MGY and MGX. How do we get those components, you ask? Well, uh, as we've mentioned in class, what I've actually done is formed similar triangles. My plane forms a triangle, and the triangle formed by my gravity vector and its components are actually similar triangles. And there's some math you can do to show that. Uh, I'm not going to go into it on this video. But what I've drawn here is the same angle theta in between my gravity vectors, or my gravity vector and my components that I have on my plane. So that it, it makes me, that enables me to solve the components in terms of that angle. So what I get out of that is mg sub y is now equal to mg, and that's going to be the cosine of theta. I'm out of room, sorry if this is messy. And mg sub x is then mg sine of theta. If I just did some magic and you don't understand what I'm doing, uh, go watch some of my videos on resolving vectors and on inclined plane geometry. I've got other videos about that uh, on my channel. Please go watch those if you don't know what I just did. But for the rest of us, we can move on and look at Newton's second law. So let's solve part B. Determine the normal force on the block in terms of given quantities and constants. And so I'm going to have to go to a new page to do this, but let me just show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to analyze the, uh, the forces in the x direction and the y direction and this minute tilted coordinate system. So I can just look here and see what all is going to be in the y direction. In the y direction, I've got my normal force. I'll write that here normal force and mgy if you can see that so and I can see if I've defined up as positive my normal force is going to be positively directed mgy will be negatively directed and of course mgy is also equal to mg cosine theta that I've said here so let me go to a new page and actually show you the process some of the forces in the y direction are equal to m a sub y um, now I'm going to unpack those. Well, first I'm going to say, well, what is a sub y? Well, is this block moving up or down through the plane, up off the plane or down through the plane? And no, it's not. Uh, so I can safely say that the acceleration in the y direction is zero, which makes this nice. So now I'm going to sum up my forces in the y direction. I said I had n, the normal force, minus mg cosine of theta and that's equal to zero right so that's n in yellow mg cosine of theta in orange and that's equal to zero which means of course that the normal force is it got to be equal to mg cosine theta so that's actually the answer for part b um, part a is this is the answer for part a now C, I need to determine the angle theta, which would yield the maximum force of static friction in terms of given quantities and constants. What we're looking for is the critical angle. We, If you're in my class, we've been through this derivation. If you're not, it's not that hard. Let's look now at the forces in the x direction. Some of the forces in the x direction. Well, what are they? I've got mgx and I've got the frictional force, right? mgx is mg sine of theta, which is what I'll put in here. So that's equal to ma sub x. If I'm using static friction, that means I'm not moving, which means that this is zero, right? So now I've got mg sine of theta in the positive direction minus the force of friction in, in the negative direction is equal to zero. Uh, if I if I rearrange this, I get mg sine of theta is equal to the force of friction, but I know that the force of friction is mu static times the normal force. And what is the normal force? It is this. I've already solved for that, right? mg cosine of theta. So I get that mg sine of theta is equal to mu static times mg cosine of theta. 
Alright, I'm going to have to stop this video because of time limits on YouTube, so I will pick up here in the next video.